You made this point, and I, I love it. It be, you know, you said, listen, intelligence needs to become national infrastructure, global infrastructure. Can you describe what you mean by that? So the internet is this information superhighway, but now this intelligence and these agents and this technology, if you've only got a few capable of using it, and it's not, and it represents only a few outputs and a certain few viewpoints then you could have an entire hundreds of millions, billions of people that don't have access to that technology that are left behind even more. They'll exacerbate these gaps. However, if we make sure it's distributed and open, then it raises all boats because it isn't centralized and controlled. So for example, uh, OpenAI has done many great things, but they banned all Ukrainians from using DALI2, their image generation software for nine months, and mm. all Ukrainian imagery. Imagine if they were the only image creation software it would mean that there would be a whole nation that Do you have any idea not, why they did that? They'd never applied to me, but I think it was caution around sanctions and other elements, and this technology is now being weaponized in terms of politically. The deeper deep fakes and such. Right? Is this a nuclear weapon? Is this a deep fake creation machine? But again, who's deciding on this technology? Is it a right to have access to augmented intelligence? Is it a right to have access to electricity, water? We're not doing great as a species, we're doing better. You know, hundreds of millions of people are still malnourished. A over a billion people still don't have internet access. But I think that if we can make intelligence available to everyone, there's no problem you can't solve. But more than that, people will be able to solve it themselves, which I think is amazing. Yeah, it's, I, I love that. You know, define an entrepreneur as someone who finds a problem and solves a problem. And the more empowered entrepreneurs uh, the better the world is, and the more problems that are solved. You know, I, I, there's an interesting point I've, I've well, tweeted. Well, uh, actually, Peter, I think you know, it's, not, it's a force multiplier, right? Because sure. anyone can change the world if they can convince other people to follow them, right? That's how you create companies, you create movements, and more. And again, we now have this new continent where the people will follow you, these entities will follow you to do things. So anyone can be a force multiplier. And that's crazy to think about, because if you are in an underprivileged area, you don't have the people around you that are skilled. How will you hire them and get them to come to your company, to come to your movement? Whereas now they're available to everyone. Yeah, it used to be where you, know, where you were born, um, whether your town had a library or a phone or even transportation, the color of your skin, your gender, all those things determined your ability, your agency to 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 create a purposeful and meaningful life. And this is that, you know, Google came first and, 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 uh, and cellular phones came next. And now this is a major force multiplier.